Okay, so 5, 2, the first thing we have right there um, talks about a pol polynomial. So we talked about a monomial before, meaning one term. But a, mo a polynomial is a monomial or the sum of monomials. So we're going to start to see plus signs and minus signs. So multiple terms. So a binomial is a polynomial with two unlike terms. If they were alike, then we could add them together and we get back to one term. And then a trinomial is three unlike terms. So the degree of the polynomial is the degree of the monomial. So we're going to look at each term individually with the highest degree. So when we did the degree of the monomial, remember we just added up the exponents. This time we have to determine, first of all, is it a polynomial in one variable? Not in one variable, I'm sorry. If it's a polynomial, and then if it's a polynomial, we'll decide its degree. So, remember a monomial from last time. They don't have negative exponents, they don't have fraction exponents, that sort of crazy thing like that. We don't have numbers under square roots, anything crazy like that. So, it says determine whether each expression is a polynomial. If it's a polynomial, say the degree of the polynomial. What do you think about that guy? Do you think it's a polynomial? Maybe a trick question. Technically, no, it's not a polynomial. Because of this guy right here, we have a variable underneath the radical, so this guy is not a polynomial. However, letter B is a polynomial. I have negative 16 p to the fifth plus 3 fourths p squared q to the seventh. Okay, so let's look at it one at a time. We have nothing crazy going on with um, numbers under radicals. We don't have any fraction exponents. We don't have any negative exponents. So let's look at it a term at a time. Terms are separated by plus signs and minus signs. So what's the degree of that guy? Some of his exponents. Five. Thanks, Riley. All right, what's the degree of that guy? Two plus seven is nine, right? Okay, so which one's bigger, five or nine? Nine. So this guy is. He's a polynomial and his degree is 9. Okay, number 2. Number two says, simplify. What else could we have say besides simplify? Combine, combine like terms. Okay, so let's combine like terms. But the thing, trick here is that we're subtracting all of these. So I have to distribute the negative. Okay, so don't forget to distribute the negative to everybody. So I'm going to, Rewrite it so you can see it. So I have a minus a cubed. Negative times a negative becomes a positive 3a. Negative times a positive is a negative. So I have 2a cubed 
minus 1a cubed. a cubed or 1a cubed, however you want to write it. 5a's plus 3a's. 8a's. And negative 7 minus 2 more. Negative 9. We're all done. All we have to do is combine like terms. Questions on that one? We're just distributing the negative. All right, use the distributive property to multiply polynomials. So in number three, I'm gonna multiply everybody by a negative y. So I have a negative y times four y squared. Remember when you're multiplying, keep the base, add your exponents. So this guy is gonna become a negative 4y to the third. Negative y times 2y becomes a negative 2y squared. A negative y times a negative 3 becomes a plus 3y. So in order for them to be like terms, they have to have the same variable and the same number of each variable. So these, this guy is a y third, a y squared, and a y. There's nothing more we can do to that guy. Okay, use the FOIL method to multiply binomials. So if they have two terms. FOIL stands for the first terms, the outside terms, the inside terms, and then the last term. So here we go, first ones, 2p times 4p. 8p squared. Two p times one. Two p. Three times four p. Twelve p. And three times one gives me three. When you multiply binomials, when you're foiling, don't forget to combine like terms then. So this guy becomes 8p squared plus 14p plus 3. Okay, questions on that? been doing that for a long time. Number five gets a little bit trickier. Think about it as like super foiling, okay? You're gonna multiply a squared by the a and the two. And then you're gonna multiply three a times the a and the two. And then you're gonna multiply negative four times the a and the two, okay? So, I'm gonna show you how to do it this way and then I'm gonna show you a lattice because some of you might like the lattice method, okay? I'm gonna show you both ways. So a squared times the a and two, and I get a cubed plus two a squared, excuse me. Now I'm gonna multiply the three a times the a, and I get three a squared. And 
then the 3a times the 2 would be 6a. And then I'm going to do the negative 4 times the a, so I got minus 4a. And the negative 4 times the 2 gives me negative 8. Last step, combine like terms. I have an a cubed, 2a squared, and 3a squared. 5a squared. And a 6a minus a 4a gives me a plus 2a minus 8. Okay, now I'm just going to show you another method. Some of you, I think, multiplied by lattices before. You probably did it with like really big numbers when you were in like middle school or something like that. Or maybe you did it with uh, binomials as well. Really, it makes a multiplication chart for you. It makes it so that you don't forget any terms, okay? If you like it, that's perfectly fine, use it. If you don't like it, say, no way, lady, I'm not doing that. I don't care, okay? All I want you to do is sometimes it's easier to see when we put it into boxes. So, I have an a, sorry, that's an a squared. An a squared, a 3a, and a negative 4. Like I said, it's just making like a multiplication chart. And an a and a 2. So a squared times a is a cubed. A times 3a gives me 3a squared. A times the negative 4 gives me negative 4a. Those should be some of the exact same ones that we got up there. Then we have 2 times a squared would be 2a squared. 2 times 3a would be 6a. And 2 times a negative 4 will be a negative 8. So these thick six things right here are the exact same six that are right there. They're just organized in a chart. The nice thing about this chart too is that like terms are usually grouped on a diagonal. So these two are like terms and I can add them straight from my chart. So this guy would be a cubed plus 5a squared. plus 2a minus 8. So you see how we got the same thing? This is just organized in a chart, and this one you're just multiplying and multiplying. It's totally up to you what you like better. If you're more like visual and I like to see it organized in nice pretty rows and columns, go for it. If you're worried about missing or forgetting to multiply somebody, do it like this. Usually, just personally, when I have something with more than three terms, I tend to use a lattice. That's just so I don't forget anybody, okay? If we multiply a trinomial times a trinomial, I'll definitely do a lattice so that I don't forget anybody. Okay, questions on any of that? Okay, number six. Number six is a little crazy because we've got a negative exponent. So I have a neg or d to the negative three times d to the fifth minus two d cubed plus d to the negative one. Okay, well let's distribute, right? And when we distribute, what do we do with our exponents if they have the same base? We're multiplying. When we're multiplying, we add our exponents, right? Okay, so we're multiplying here, so I'm going to add my exponents. And I'm going to write it all out so that you can see it. Keep the base, 
add the exponents. Minus 2 d to the negative 3 plus 3. plus d to the negative 3 plus a negative 1. So I multiplied everybody by d to the negative 3, and because they have the same base, I'm going to add my exponents. All right, what's negative 3 plus 5? Minus 2d to the 0. We'll fix that here in just a second. Plus d to the negative 3 plus a negative 1 would be negative 4. Alright, so we still have a few things to fix. d to the 0. What happens when I give it an exponent of zero? What do we get? Hey, uh, one. one. Anytime we raise a number to a zero exponent, we always get one. Okay, so let's try it in our calculator and I'll show it to you. What if I take eight to the zero power? Well, I didn't push enter. Ah! Come on, little buddy. One, right? Okay. 99 to the zero power, one. So anytime you raise a number to a zero power or a variable or anything like that, this guy is going to become one. All right, so let's fix this guy a little bit. We have d squared minus two times one. What about negative exponent? Okay, let's go back and look at our, oh, finding the right one. Negative exponents here. So I have a to the negative n in my rule and it says it moves to the denominator, right? All right, well, do these guys over here have negative exponents? No. So just this guy is going to move to the denominator. So he becomes one over d to the positive four. And he's not dividing these guys because he's just over here. So here we go. Finish it up, clean it up. d squared minus two plus one over d to the fourth. All right, questions on anything on the notes there? Okay, grab your worksheet and let's go through a few more examples together. What do you think? So turn the page a couple pages. All right, so it says um, 247 at the bottom of your worksheet. So look at um, number two, because that one looks a little funny. First of all, it says determine whether each expression is a polynomial. If it's not a polynomial, or if it is, excuse me, if it is a polynomial, state the degree of the polynomial. All right, number one, there's nothing crazy going on there. Is that guy a polynomial? Yes, it is. Okay, it's got nice pretty um, exponents. There's no variables under radicals. There's no negative exponents. There's no nothing crazy. So that guy is a polynomial. What's his degree? Two. Two. How 
How about number two? You think that guy's a polynomial? Now, if we were gonna move this guy back up to the numerator, he would not be. So this guy's no. And since he's not a polynomial, we don't have to worry about his degree. What do you think about number three? Yeah, he's okay. What do you think about his degree? Okay, but we're looking at exponents. So, perfect, JJ. What we call that guy is the leading coefficient. So, eight's called the leading coefficient. But we're gonna look at his exponents. So remember, if they don't have an exponent, we assume them to be one, and then we can add them together. So, JT, what do you think? Two, perfect. Yeah, Jaden. Um, so we could. So the, the degree of this guy, this term is two. And the degree of that term is just one, so we pick the bigger one. Good question. Like over here, this guy's degree is two for that term, one and then zero. So the biggest one for number one would be two. Good question. Okay, now I want you to look down at the bottom. It says simplify for all of them, but it sort of changes halfway in the middle. So I want you to draw a line above 12 and 13. So 4 through 11 are the same type of thing. What's different about 4 through 11? What are we doing there? It just says simplify, but really what are you doing? Adding and subtracting, right? This whole section is just add or subtract. Combine like terms. Okay, what's different about the bottom? 12 through 25. Multiplying. Okay. So on these top ones, are the exponents going to change at all when we add and subtract? <coughs> no. Okay, so let's look at this guy right here. Let's just do number five. I picked one with those subtractions, so you have to remember to distribute the negative. So this guy is 5d plus 5 minus d minus 1 for a grand whopping total of 4d plus 4. Okay, so be careful with the subtraction. Distribute the negative. Okay, now let's go look at six. Notice the exponents didn't change. That guy just had a plain old d and a number. Plain old d and a number. But now, Go look at 16. This one seems wild. I'm multiplying, and when I multiply, remember I'm going to add my exponent. All right, so I'm going to put a 1 out there so we can see that this guy multiply the numbers. 1 times a negative 4 is negative 4. m squared times m squared m to the fourth, n cubed times n squared, n to the fifth, that one's tricky, make sure you're adding them, minus two times a negative one, no I said that backwards, one times a negative two, that's still two, m squared times m, m to the third, n cubed times n, n to the fourth. What about the p? Does he have anybody to multiply by? No, he's just hanging out, chilling with those guys. 
minus a negative 7 times 1, negative 7. And then I have nobody to combine with the m squared and the n, so they get to fill and hang out too. So, notice on 16 that my exponents change. When you multiply, your exponents can change. When you're adding and subtracting, they don't. Okay? All right. Questions. Starting at 18, you're going to start foiling. So 18 to 25, that's where you're going to foil. Okay. I'm going to...